Shifting gears now to elections. So the next election is Tuesday, November 2nd. On the ballot is governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, members of the House of Delegates, Commonwealth attorney, commissioner of the revenue, treasurer, and sheriff. And as they've done in the past few elections now, the voter registrar's office is offering lots of ways for you to cast your ballot. I spoke with the director of elections, Marilyn Pinkerlin, recently to get all the info. We've had a year to figure out uh, the do's and don'ts and the best ways to do things. Uh, we're required to have 45 days of early voting at our office, but we've chosen to go ahead and have six satellites throughout the city and to let them be open the full 45 days as well. That way voters can go somewhere close to their home. There's a library in every zip code. We are using one differently this year than we did last year, so we want folks to know um, due to the parking at South Norfolk Library, we have chosen to use the Cuffey Community Center on Windy Road, so we will be there instead of the South Norfolk Library this year for the satellite. Now, for early voting, you don't have to fill out an application like you used to. However, if you want to vote by mail, there is still an application, so we have the information of where you're registered and where to send the ballot, because some people are already out of town and need their ballot mailed somewhere else, college students, things like that. So you can either download the application from the Department of Elections website or you can um, go online if you have a DMV uh, driver's license or ID issued. You can go online and use the Citizen Portal and just do everything right online and it'll come straight to our office and we'll get that ballot in the mail to you. You do still have to show an ID, but it doesn't have to be a photo ID. There's about 17 different IDs that we'll accept. The most common, of course, is the driver's license, the DMV issued ID card, but people can use um, an employee ID, they can use a college ID. There's just a whole list on the Department of Elections website if you don't have the more common IDs. We've seen a change in what Election Day does look like because so many people are choosing to vote early or vote by mail. So Election Day doesn't look nearly as busy as it used to. Um, we still do encourage people to, you know, stretch it out. Don't go bombarding them when they open the doors at 6 a.m., going around 10, 11 o'clock. Usually there's no line at all and you just go in and show your ID and go cast your ballot. So when it comes to getting official voting information, there are two great resources. The Chesapeake Voter Registrar's Office can be found at 411 Cedar Road, online at cityofchesapeake.net slash vote, and also by phone at 277-9797. You can also visit the state website, which is elections.virginia.gov. Now, as Mary Lynn mentioned when talking about the satellite voting locations, the Cuffey Center location will not be available on September 21st. Now, that'll be closed while crews install a new generator. So we're actually going to get more on that story next week, so stay tuned. And as I mentioned, the Commonwealth attorney is on the ballot, and there are three candidates. To help you learn more about each candidate, the Chesapeake Bar Association is hosting a forum on September 23rd from 6 to 7 at the Conference Center. The event is free and open to the public, and they're also accepting suggestions for questions that, we should, that they should ask the candidates. So you can send those suggestions to ChesapeakeCWAForum at gmail.com. And if you can't make it to the forum in person, we'll be airing it live on Chesapeake Television. So tune into that on Cox Channel 48, Verizon Channel 43, and online at cityofchesapeake.net slash TV.